Yo, what is going on guys? So in today's video, we're going to do something that I, I, don't, I haven't done in at least a very long time. We're going to be talking all about mastery. So this video is going to be good for pretty much anyone in the community. Uh, if you would like to know my personal masteries that I run, I'm going to show you guys my two main mastery setups, one for non-suicides, one for suicides. And then if you're a bit more of a newer player, this is going to be really good for you because I'm going to explain to you what I think are the best masteries in the game, some that you should maybe prioritize getting first, and just some masteries that you should be pretty much running in every single build, whether you're running suicides or not. So we're going to get into all of that. First, I'm going to show you guys my suicide, my non-suicide build. So this is a pretty solid build. Now, the, the main thing to keep in mind is that throughout this video is don't feel the need to, to copy my exact setup. You know, make changes to it for, for your, the champions that you use. It totally depends on your main champions is the, the, the master setup that you should personally be using. So this is just a really good overall master setup that I, that I put on for non-suicide. It covers a lot of ground, a lot of characters and it really brings them up. So let's start in the offensive tree here. So pretty standard stuff in the first part. Um, I got one point in courage. This, these initial points into precision and cruelty just help to raise your critical rate and make your crit damage a little bit stronger. And you also just need to put enough points into the left side of the tree to unlock uh, the ability to put points into the right side. Now the main stuff here is despair, running maxed out despair. I always run at least, at, oh, I advise running always at least one point, just at least one point into despair so that you're always able to lower the effects of regeneration in any matchup with debuffs. Uh, just one point in here uh, is, is highly recommend always having at least one. Uh, and then deep wounds. So this is a deep wounds build five out of five again you you don't if you if some of your top champions aren't don't apply bleeds then you probably don't want to be running deep wounds deep wounds is also super expensive to unlock and it takes just a lot of units to even get it to five out of five when you're respecting your master it's like nine ten points for the final uh, two points it's, that's a lot of units it really does add up the I only suggest using deep wounds, you know, if you're using heavy bleeders, mainly like Nick Fury. Like if you're using Nick Fury, he's one of your main champions, then yeah, I highly suggest running deep wounds pretty much all the time. Personally, I really don't run deep wounds that often um, unless uh, I am using Nick Fury in like Alliance War for some specific, something very specific that I'm like, oh, this is a rough matchup. I'm gonna need deep wounds. Normally, I am not really running deep wounds, but I do have it unlocked for scenarios where I would like it. Um, and then one point in assassin, I actually do have assassin fully unlocked on on my account. This is the kind of creator beta with all the all the masteries open, so I can just show you guys. Um, assassin is is great, uh, but just one point. I never run more than one point in any of my normal builds, even if I even do have one. Just one point is really worth it to unlock. I wouldn't suggest buying more points in assassin unless you're like a very end game player and you you want it. The only reason I I spent the, the units to fully unlock it was for the summoner showdown to try to try to kill the opponent faster in that last little bit of percentage to increase my damage over, put by a little bit or or their ability accuracy over by a little bit you know just just to help a little bit but i you only need one point assassin and if you're unlocking it for the first time you want to get one point that's cool that's great get by the first point I, you don't need any more dude i went years playing this game clearing every single piece of content including abyss with only having one point unlocked in Assassin. So don't feel the need to get any more than that. One point, you're good to go, very worth it. Same with Courage, like one point in Courage is very worth it when you're below 50%, um, you get 10% attack. The future points only give you an additional 5% for each point. So the first one is so worth it, but more it loses its worthwhileness. Um, and again, every build I suggest at least running just at least one point in Courage. It's a great mastery to have, it's very cheap as well. Now let's move on to the defensive tree. So a couple of masteries that you should pretty much always be running max here is recovery. Just having max recovery increases your regeneration effects and it's all kinds of regeneration in this game here. Here it says buff or passive. So, you know, a regen buff, a regen passive effect, willpower, uh, like any kind of regen that you're getting from any kind of ability is going to be increased by recovery. It's such a good mastery to have. Um, I highly recommend always having that maxed salve you don't need this maxed uh it doesn't really matter too much just i only ever put one point in it these days um and then block proficiency you always want to max this out um it increases the offense you have every single champion in the game so 
always, always max this out. Um, you can run perfect block maxed out. Uh, you can only get 4% total from it, which isn't that much, but it, it can save you every now and again. You can do that. I prefer to run standard ground. Um, I have it at four points right now. This is a more personal preference. You really don't don't need to max it. I, I advise just always having one point in it. It's a 17% chance that if you take a heavy, you're gonna resist it. And at five out of five, it's a 50% chance, which is basically just a coin toss. Um, so yeah, I run four to five. I think it's worth it, man. It saved me in the past. Um, it, it's pretty good, honestly. I think it's one of the most underrated masteries in the game. Stand your ground, man. I think it's pretty good. Um, and then willpower. Willpower is my most suggested mastery for new players, aside from parry, dexterity, and stupefy. I think willpower, which we'll talk about in a little bit, I think willpower is one of the most worthwhile mastery. The willpower is the only mastery that I've went out of my way to unlock on Legs Jr., which on Legs Jr., my master setup is I barely have anything unlocked. Willpower was one of the first ones that I that I spent carb carbonadium cores on because I think willpower is that good. You should always, I don't care who you are, um, unless like you're doing an, an extreme, extreme Legends run with like Ghost, that is like the only time I you should not have points in willpower. Even then, you could still have one, but any other scenario, always, always, always have at least one point in willpower. Always, man. Always at least one point. And is it worth it to put more points in willpower? Absolutely. I always run willpower three out of three. Whether I'm using suicide masteries or not, it doesn't matter. I'm always, always running maxed out willpower. Now next, see two masteries here that are pretty uncommon. Inequity and resonate. Now you need to have a point in inequity to be able to put a point into resonate. What inequity does is for uh, debuffs on your opponent, they reduce the enemy's attack rating, which is nice. And then resonate here, every time you hit the opponent, you have a chance to apply a weakness debuff. Now I am always running these two masteries. If I'm using suicides or not, it doesn't matter. I always run resonate. And people, some people find that a little bit weird. Dude, Resonate is a fantastic mastery. Like just to pretty much always be applying a weakness debuff to your opponent. If, if you ever slip up, you get hit, you know, the damage is reduced. You, the block damage you're taking is reduced. It's just a really good mastery to always have on. It is a little bit expensive, so definitely don't feel the need to run it. But the main reason I originally unlocked it was for Void. It's a really good mastery when playing Void. And I think it's just a good mastery to always be rocking, um, especially if you pair that with despair, it's just another debuff on the opponent to reduce healing. So for example, you know, when I'm using Human Torch, trying to reverse healing, um, uh, uh, using Resonate with uh, Despair, it's just another debuff to help reverse that healing. So it's nice for that. Now we have a couple of masteries up here that I that I don't actually have unlocked on, on the main server, which is Coagulate and Suture. So Suture reduces the duration of enemy bleed effects. Um, I don't really advise this mastery, D don't see people use it too much, but uh, coagulate here. This one is huge, so why coagulate is so good is because your champions take 10% less damage from any bleed debuff or bleed passive effect they suffer. That's only one point. So this 10% actually stacks with champions like Magneto or Omega Red where they're 90% resistant to bleed you give one point and coagulate here, that takes it right up to 100%. So if, if you are uh, if you have like a six star rank three Omega Red, I highly suggest running maxed out, or just one point and coagulate. Uh, or even if you have just a 565, 600, you, sh you should probably invest one point into, co it's only one point. Um, it's definitely worth it if you're, you're a big Omega Red player. Magneto, I don't think Magneto needs it as much, but definitely for Omega Red, uh, it's definitely a good idea to have just one point unlocked. And the more points you unlock, the more it reduces, but for Omega Red, it's it, only one is needed to bring it to 100%. But yeah, those masters are worth it. Um, and then we move to the proficiency tree. So here uh, I'm rocking three out of three parry, four out of five in limber. Limber is just always a good mastery to have a lot of points in. Usually I like to run it maxed, but for, for, because I had I wanted to have deep wound on this build, I, I had to sacrifice a point out of it. Um, stupefy, always run that maxed and dexterity. So you know, parry is the most parry and dexterity are the two most important masteries in the game. You always want to have at least one point in parry and dexterity. Um, it's good to run three out of three in parry, um, and yeah, limber. It's just a a good mastery to always be running just if you get stunned which happens it just reduces the time of that stun 
and then Stupefy. So Stupefy is actually, I think, is the third most important mastery in the entire game after parry and dexterity. What Stupefy does is it increases the length of your stun debuffs on the opponent. In in normal content against like just uh, like non summoners champions, it's not needed. But anytime you're facing another summoner's champions, um, they're at least running one point in limber, maybe more. And in those scenarios, without any points in Stupefy, the, the st your stun just falls off so quickly. It's ridiculous. So you always, always, always want to be running maxed out Stupefy. Always maxed out Stupefy. Um, and now a couple of masteries here that don't have any points in. Petrify and Pacify. What these do is when the uh, when you stun the enemy, uh, you reduce the regeneration rate and power rate uh, with Petrify here. This is a really good mastery. I actually run this quite a lot when I'm using Human Torch. You know, I'll just parry, medium, light, medium, and it just gives them less power, less combative power, uh, which is really nice. You know, you can just get in more combo hits and not have to bait as many special attacks. So Petrify is a really solid mastery. Uh, I do have maxed out in, in some builds. Again, for this one, for max deep wounds, I wasn't able to. And then also Pacify. So Pacify here is, is pretty cool too. Uh, it's whenever you're, the defender's stunned, you reduce ability accuracy by 10% and you can get it up to a total of 30%. So I used to always run this back in the day when I was fighting like magics. I'd parry before pushing them over a bar of power to try to get lucky with the ability accuracy reduction. And I believe this paired with Magneto's 70% uh, against metal champions. And you can actually, I've heard you can bring it up to 100%. So that's pretty cool. So if you're a big Magneto player, that could be uh, something you could go for. But don't feel the need to always be running Max Pacify. Uh, and then I have a couple points in Mystic Dispersion here. So Mystic Dispersion is the best class-based mastery. You get power for when a buff expires on the opponent or is nullified when you're a Mystic Champion. Um, I do have five out of five unlocked. It's a really great mastery for so many Mystic Champions. The, the rest of the class-based masteries are pretty much useless except for a couple. Cosmic one is absolutely useless. This tech one can be pretty good with uh, Punisher 2099. I've heard some pretty good things with him using it. And also Ghost, I know Pete runs Max Caller tech with Ghost. Uh, the science one isn't terrible. It increases energy resistance in science champs. That can actually be useful. Um, and then the skill one, pure skill is useless. Um, and the, the, the mutant one, um, basically you can reduce bleed, you can make bleeds expire faster, but now that you can make any mutant a horseman, you can make them immune to bleed. So yeah, this, ah, don't really think it's that good either. So yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's my non-suicide build. Now let's go ahead and switch this over to a full suicide master build, and I'll show you guys basically what goes into it when I'm when I'm making my suicide master. So this defense tree, I keep this the exact same. I don't even touch it when I when I put suicides on. It's really uh, I'm gonna take off deep wounds here. So uh, when I when I'm making my master setup here, so I put one point in parry to start with, one point in limber, one point in dexterity, and like seriously, like you don't have to take anyone's advice on masteries. You can do whatever you think's best. That's what I've been doing my whole time playing this game. I just put on whatever mastery setup I think is personally going to be the best. Um, so yeah, just, this is the bare minimum you need for the proficiency tree. Max stupefy in one point and parry, limber, dex. That's This is the bare minimum. And this saves you a lot of points to use elsewhere. So for then, if I want to go run suicides, I'm going to go like this. Get all these points going here. These ones take a little bit longer to apply. We, we really need just set builds that we can switch from. That's honestly the most annoying part about changing your masteries. It just takes time to apply all these points or at least just an ability to like select how many points you want to put into a mastery. Be like, oh, put five out of five into precision and then boom, it's done. Like even that would help, man. But yeah, so let's get this uh, generic left side going. Oh, look at that, an error with the network. Oh, awesome. Um, so yeah, there we go. And then from here, um, I only ever put one point in Glass Cannon. I never put any more points in the Glass Cannon. Uh, I don't think it's that good of a mastery. It's it's just not really that much attack, especially when you're running Suicides. You get so much attack from the other masteries that a little bit more from Glass Cannon, I just don't think it's worth the points. So you can run su half Suicides if you want, or full Suicides, you know, depending on your champs, your roster. 
I typically, if I'm, if I, the worst part about suicides is the recoil here, which you typically only want to be running one point in, uh, again, unless it's ext extreme scenarios, such as if you're only using like magic because you can heal back the recoil damage, or for example, if you're using ghost where you can just phase the recoil damage, those are some of the very few scenarios where you want to run more than one point recoil, because this is the biggest downside to suicide masteries. Every time you throw a special one or two, you're going to take 5% damage at one point. So if you're already sack, if you're already putting on recoil, you know you should probably just run maxed out suicides, three points, and all the others. And if you are running suicides, then you definitely want to be running willpower as well to help mitigate all that poison and bleed damage that you're taking. So this is a pretty basic suicide build here. We got resonate, we got suicides, we got the bare minimum here, and then we have nine points left. So at this point, you know. It, or you could have 11 points if you're not running uh, Resonate and you're not running uh, Willpower. So at that point, it's really up to you what you want to do with those remaining points. Like I said, I always suggest running Despair at least one point. I personally always max it out. So this leaves me with six points now, and it depends what I'm doing. If I'm going to be using Bleed Champions, then I could put some points into Deep Wounds. Um, maybe at the very minimum, I'll just get one point in Assassin, and I'm feeling pretty good with that. Um, I don't really want, I want to put anything else in the defensive tree here. So it leaves me four points left here. You know, I could I could max out parry. Uh, that's always a good idea if you have some remaining points. Um, and, oh man, the network is not liking me today. Uh, and then you could also put some more points into limber if you want, or you could get some points into, into petrify. It's really whatever you want to do from that point. Um, and yeah, that, that's really it. Uh, if also, if you're a new player, it's a good idea to put some points into these masteries here just to help you gain some XP. And it's also not a bad idea to put, if you're a newer player again, to put some points, just one point into Pittance here, which gives you plus one gold for every single gold reward that you get. Now, to put this into perspective, like me playing this game for like four years, I've earned gold over a million times you know way more every, every single node that you move on gives you gold in like solo content so for every single one of those movies if i had one point in pins here i get one gold for all those gold rewards so it really does add up if you're a newer player i definitely just putting one point in there at least um and then here you actually increase it by a percentage amount that could be an idea as well um, these masteries here, these detect masteries are useless. Definitely don't put any points in those. Those used to be the meta a long time ago, but with Alliance War being revealed, there's no point in, in those masteries. And uh, yeah, we also have some unknown masteries that have been coming soon for since I started playing this game. Who knows when those will come? Uh, there are some other masteries that you can run, like Energy Resistance, which I typically never run, but for example, if you're fa facing like a, a, a magic or an ice man that you don't really have a great counter for, it's not a bad idea to put some points into energy resistance to mitigate that damage a little bit. And that's that's really it. There's a couple other masters I didn't talk about here, like Unfazed. You can run this. I don't have it unlocked. Never, never really had a need for it. This is a bit more of a defensive mastery to place with like on defense that if you evade the, you can go unstoppable. It, it can also help you offensively. Um, but I just never saw really the, I don't know. I, I, I never saw it really that illustrious. Didn't really want to unlock it, spend the units on it. And then there's also some mastery down here that increase your fury. So this one can increase your fury buffs for, for length. Uh, and this one can increase the potency of those fury buffs. So this is actually not a bad idea if you're running Aegon and like Abyss. Uh, what I would do is once I got to the Collector, I would just fully max out these Masteries here to, to help the Furies that Aegon gets, you know, get hit on purpose, get those massive Furies, uh, and then just hit harder and they last a little bit longer. So that's not a bad idea, but you know, under normal circumstances, I don't really advise putting points into those Masteries either. And yeah, guys, that's, that's really it. For, for all my tips on masteries, the main builds that I'm running, um, just to give you guys an idea. Uh, this was a long video, but I hope it, I hope it helped out. If you uh, are a new player, I hope you learned a little bit, a little something. Uh, and yeah, you gotta, when you're a new player, you know, you really gotta prioritize maxing out the, and, and unlocking the right masteries first. So, you know, for example, on Legs Jr., the first thing I got was Parry and Dexterity. I don't know which one I got first, but those are definitely the first two you need to buy. The third master I got was Stupefy, max it out, 
And then from there, the only other mastery that I've gone so far was one point into willpower, because I think willpower is that worth it. After that point, um, on Legs Jr. and just like a new account, I would probably look into unlocking one point into despair. I think that would be a pretty good thing to have. Uh, or maybe these uh, the, the crit rate masters, I don't even have those, uh, but they can be expensive. Uh, masters can be very expensive when you first start playing the game. But yeah, that's going to do it for the video, guys. If you, if you enjoyed, do drop a thumbs up. Let me know what you guys thought, if this helped you at all. Just give me a, a bit of an insight into what I'm rocking. But yeah, if you guys have any uh, mastery th that you run or any, any critiques on my builds or anything like that, go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out.